may God give you grace to understand what he is saying to the nations. The Spirit of God is not just talking to the, the church. He is also talking to the nations. The Holy Spirit is not just talking to the godly people. Because everybody belongs to God in the ultimate sense. In the ultimate sense, God made everybody. And since God made everybody, he wants you to understand that it's his will that you fulfill his expectations. As a matter of fact, I think this video is on the wrong setting. Give me a second. I want to, I got to fix something here. I think this video, I think this video is limited to who it, who can see it. So I want to make sure I change that before we keep preaching this gospel without everybody knowing that God is not just talking to the church, but that he's talking to everybody. So let me see something here while you wait so ever so patiently. And I appreciate that. Okay. So the Holy Spirit. And now since we changed that, let's share it now. Uh, the Holy Spirit is moving people to a higher level of understanding. God is moving people to a higher level of understanding. And what that means is that he is requiring more of you. Uh, so the Spirit of God is requiring more of you because he's requiring more for you so God wants to give more to you because he's requiring more from you all right so God wants to give you more because he wants to do more through you so the more that God gives to you the more work he's doing through you the more that God gives to you, the more work he's doing through you. So the Spirit of God is working through the blessings he gives to you. There are enemies against your blessings. There are powers, there are evil spirits throughout the world, throughout the atmosphere, working to destroy your life through sin. That's their goal. Their goal is to destroy your life through sin. It is the will of God that you overcome the demonic powers in your world. It's the will of God that you overcome the devil. So the Lord wants us to overcome the devil. He wants us to hear his voice and he wants us to overcome the devil. A few days ago, I've not done a public message on this Facebook uh, for, I think, a few days, maybe. So today is Friday the 3rd. I think the last video that we did publicly was maybe Tuesday, March 31st. And the Spirit of the Lord definitely wants me to share with you what he told me. To say it to you, the Lord, the Lord wants me to share something with you. Obviously, uh, you know He wants me to share something with you all the time. By all the time, I don't mean all the time. By all the time, I mean frequently. Uh, and it is this: it's what Jesus said. It's what uh, it's what the Spirit of God says in Proverbs twenty-eight, I think, verses one and two, maybe definitely verse two. Uh, but the Lord wants us to know that spirits control people culture is a manifestation of the spirits that control the people of a region all right culture so there is a cultivating a controlling of a generation generations have culture regions have culture there's the culture of a household the culture of a city, the culture of a state, the culture of a nation, the culture of the world during a time frame, how people behave, what people do, who leads, who who's the dominant influence, who the dominant who 
who the dominant influence is. So in your generation, the United States of America is a dominant influence. Now, the Spirit of the Lord let us know something very, very critical. In Daniel, the Lord let us know in Daniel chapter 2, in Daniel chapter 2, the Lord, through King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel interprets a dream that God gave to King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So God spoke to King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and gave him understanding about the nations and how the nations were going to, how the empires would would operate and how they would which realm would reign he let daniel know concerning nebuchadnezzar's prophetic dream so we see right there that the spirit of god isn't just talking to the sons of god the spirit of god speaks to those who are faithful to him more frequently and with clarity with greater clarity so he speaks to them about higher matters but God talks to everybody whether they are faithful or whether they are unfaithful because all are going to be judged by his word you say why does God talk to me because he's going to judge you by the things he says to you he's going to de he's going to determine whether you spend eternity with him or whether you spend eternity in the lake of fire based on your response right now to his words to his commands because he reveals his he reveals himself he reveals his very self he reveals his mind he reveals his way he reveals his will through his words and so if you don't accept his words you reject him if you reject him, you can't reign with him. You can't reign in life with Christ. You can't reign in this temporal life with Christ. You can't reign in the eventual life with Christ Jesus and the Father. So if you don't accept him now, he won't accept you then. If you say you love Jesus, but you reject his word, the Holy Spirit classifies you as rejecting God. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you reject the words of Jesus, then you are rejecting Jesus himself. When we hear messages that convolute or corrupt the word of God, they're not just changing what God said. They're not just ignoring and dismissing and altering and diminishing what God said. They are changing his image they are ruining the faith of the people designed to commit to God ordained to commit to God God designs you to commit to him and so he speaks to you so that you know who he is and so that you have power to commit to him so if he speaks to you and you misconstrue you misunderstand you reject his word well, guess what? If you reject his word, you're rejecting his image. If you reject his image, you're rejecting his power. If you reject his power, you're going to receive another spirit because there's a God and there's a devil. And so the devil runs, he governs a kingdom or supervises a kingdom of evil spirits sent throughout the world to control evil people that's who they're ordained to control demons are responsible for governing the lives of the ungodly the ungodly it was an ungodly decision it, the ungodly let the demons out through sin and so they are out to run their lives they affect the lives of the godly because they affect the world but they're, they're not in charge of the godly they're in charge of the wicked in great measure 
So the Lord tells you things because he wants to reveal himself to you. You say, why does God talk to me? Because he loves you and he wants to reveal himself to you. He reveals himself to you to make you like him. He makes you like him because he is good and he's productive. And he proves that he's productive through the transformation, through the renewal, through the refreshing that he, he brings to your life. So he, he shows all of creation. He reveals his goodness by the transformation you undergo by his spirit, by his power as he speaks to you. So as he speaks to you, his words transform you and he reveals his majesty, his goodness, and his loveliness. So when we misunderstand the word of God, to the degree that we misunderstand it, to the degree that we twist it and change it, we lose access to him. And if you lose access to him, then you lose access to what he offers. Well, what does he offer that I need everything everything that I that I see that's good I need it in some form if I reject his word I'm rejecting him because his heart his very spirit is in his word Jesus said my words are spirit and they are life so if Jesus says out of the abundance of your heart your mouth speaks if Jesus says that your words are connected to your heart guess what Jesus is the word of God and he is connect he is the the expression of the heart of the father if you reject Jesus words you're rejecting him if you reject him you reject his father if you reject his father you are saying you want the devil to control you to cause you sickness to cause you disease to cause you injury to cause you failure to cause you uh, the death of loved ones and all kinds of hardship in this world and eternal punishment in the world to come. So you have to decide who you want to be. It is hard to commit to the Lord when you are surrounded by evil imagery and evil communication with, through sound. So the other day or today or yesterday I was in prayer and either I was in prayer I think it was this morning uh, I saw an image and we know that spirits communicate through culture jewelry is a part of culture the Lord reveals his way through human behavior and the devil reveals his way through human behavior so there are elements of culture that are controlled by the spirit of wisdom by the spirit of knowledge by the spirit of understanding from God there are elements of culture that simply show that there is a God and he is orderly and then there are elements of culture that communicate fear of evil and death and that communicate uh, hatred toward God, towards God, hatred towards man. So culture is a, it's called corrupt because God, it, it, it's a combination of the truth and lies. So culture is corrupt because it's a combination of good and evil, making it corrupt. If this bottle of water were 30% gasoline, it'd be poisonous. So I can't rely on culture to know the will of God or to hear the voice of God because the truth of God is operating in culture, but it's mixed with the lies of the devil so culture is a combination 
of good and evil. Man is made in the image of God. God made man upright, but man has sought out many inventions. So man is corrupt. He's got good aspects that are based on the fact that God made him in his image, and he's got bad aspects in that he's taken on evil and sin governs his life. So culture is a mixture. People are a mixture. Culture is a, an expression of the minds of the people. The people are influenced by the spirits in their environment. Since the people are influenced by the spirits in their environment, the culture is a manifestation of the spirits that are controlling the people because the spirits get the people, move on the people, motivate the people to make certain decisions. The people express themselves through the various elements of social culture and in that we see the spirits. So the spirits reveal themselves through the people. The spirits reveal themselves through human behavior, through generational traditions. The spirits reveal themselves through the people, through cultural expressions. Peter calls it the vain traditions of your father. The Lord warned Cain that sin wanted to control his life. Sin describes evil power. Sin describes evil decision making. That's what sin is a description of. It is a disregarding of God's will. It is a perversion of God's purposes for human life. For life. God wants righteousness. Sin works for toward death and destruction. So it is the will of the Spirit of God to transform man. Jesus said you have to be born again so that you can see and enter the kingdom of God. There's a phase of God's kingdom that he wants to grant you access to in this temporal world and then there's the eternal kingdom of God he wants to grant you access to. In order to gain access to the temporal phase of God's kingdom authority and the eternal phase of God's kingdom authority, I've got to be transformed by his Holy Spirit so that I make decisions that he tells me to make so that I receive the power of his Holy Spirit so that I am a vessel, a spigot, a faucet, a channel, a pipe for his power. The Holy Ghost wants you to be a pipe for his power. He wants to flow through you. He wants to operate through you. He wants to work in you as a son and he wants to work through you. God is either going to treat you eternally as a son or eternally as a servant. All of God's sons occupy roles of service, making every son of God a servant. Jesus is called a servant in that he took on human form. So when he took on f human form, he became a servant. It literally says that, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my elect, in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit in him, and he's going to show forth judgment to the nations. So Jesus is revealing the Father to the nations through his people through the word of God, through their actions, and through their words. So through your words and through your actions, you are revealing Jesus. And Jesus is a revelation of his Father. You see Jesus, you see the Father. You see Jesus committed people, you're seeing Jesus and the Father. Paul, a follower of Jesus Christ, as we hope you all are today because the kings of Israel, the kings of Judah, they were required to confront the evils and to throw down the altars in their regions. Every king had a responsibility 
to preach righteousness, to execute the laws of God given through the prophets, particularly, particularly the prophet Abraham, who was the father of the Jews, and the prophet Moses, who was given as a standard to the nation of Israel. So the Holy Ghost spoke through Moses to set standards for how the nation would live. So the Spirit of God took control, complete control, over the culture of the nation of Israel. He took complete control. He told them how they would interact with each other. He told them what their holidays would be. He told them how they would dress. The Spirit of God took complete control over the culture of the Israelites. And so when the kings began to reign, it, it, it positioned these men to control the culture of their nations. Many of the kings did not control the culture of their nations. They did not enforce the righteous will of God. And because they didn't enfor enforce the will of God for the culture of their nation, guess who controlled their nation? The demons. The devils controlled their nation. The devils controlled the people. The people made decisions. And their decisions were repeated they were influential expressions and the people in their region began to do what the wealthy and the talented and the educated and the beautiful were doing. So the people became the standard instead of God. Their perspectives, their endeavors, their information their beliefs became the cultural standards many many churches are that way the leader is the standard the church culture is the standard if they accept this worldly form of entertainment because the pastor and the authorities of that church say so well the word of god is no longer the standard, the Roman Catholic Church, I was talking with someone who was explaining to me years ago how the Roman Catholic Church operates and why they believe what they believe. He simply told me that the Bible is the third most valuable source. He said the, first, he said the most important source of authority, the highest authority in the Roman Catholic Church is the 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 pope the, who is the priest the the pope is the highest authority what he says goes in the Roman Catholic Church then the second authority is church tradition what they've done throughout the churches that organization's existence so the Pope is the most, is the greatest authority. The sitting Pope, whoever the Pope is, he has, he determines right from wrong for all adherents of the Roman Catholic Church. So the Pope by himself determines right from wrong in the Roman Catholic Church. And then, after him, if he doesn't have a, if he doesn't, know which decision to make he can rely on church tradition he can look back in the annals of church history okay be very very careful when you hear anybody use the term church fathers and when you hear any preacher or minister use the term early church fathers they're not talking most of the time about uh, Peter, James, and John. They're not talking about it. They're talking about other guys that you don't know about from the scripture. They're talking about guys who suppose guy, guys who have all kinds of different uh, names that you're unfamiliar with. Okay? Um, they're talking about other people. They're talking about people.
So be ve when you hear that at church or wherever you hear that, I don't know who, who's watching this or what you're going to hear. Whenever you hear the term early church fathers or the early church, they're not, they're not talking about what happened in the book of Acts. They're not talking about from Acts to Revelation. They're talking about after. They're talking about after. Most of the time, 90% or more of the time, you hear people at church, pastors and preachers and teachers and reference that. They're not talking about the blood-washed Church of Jesus Christ. They're talking about the church that began to make decisions that were inconsistent with decisions that were already made. So... The councils and the traditions. That's what they're talking about. So beware. When you hear that, get your ba get your waste basket out. When you hear that, ask the person to hold on and run and get your trash can and have it available. Because what they're about to tell you belongs there. Like, okay, all right, I'm sorry. What were you about to say? Because I already know. What? I already know where that's supposed to go. Oh, well, the early church. Okay. They used to. I got you right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I got to get it. I got to get it ready. You have to get it ready. So the guy said the greatest authority in the Roman Catholic Church is the Pope. He said the second church. He said the second highest authority in the Roman Catholic Church is church tradition. Jesus preached this in Matthew 15. In Matthew 15, Jesus preached this message. He said, you are teaching in the place of truth, in, 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 in the place of the actual commands of God, in the place of the actual commands of the Holy Spirit, you are teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. And so he said that, so that's their second source of authority. First is the Pope, then is church tradition, and then if, then is the Bible. So if the Pope and church tradition disagree with what the Bible actually says, they don't accept what the Bible says. If the Pope has a different perspective, then they accept what he says. If the Pope doesn't really have a perspective, he can decide, well, what did the other popes do? Why is that important? Why is that necessary to confront? Well, we've got to identify what's happening there because the Holy Spirit revealed to us that he has already told us what to do and how to please Father God through people who have come and gone whose personal lives were on public display who were given clear prophecies of what would occur in the future and who lived in holiness and were a demonstration of God's power. So when a man of God dies in God, having lived a life that was publicly distinctive as righteous, that man, his life was to have been compared with the lives of others who were living in the public power of the spirit. So we're going to compare. We're going to look at Peter. And Jesus the Christ said that this was the guy. He would use to start the church. And Peter walked alongside of James and John and Andrew and Philip and those guys. Their lives were consistently dedicated. In that they were faithful in their decision making and they were unified in their faithfulness and in the display of power the fact that so they they expressed the righteousness of God they were separate 
from the evils of culture in that they repented of the mentalities and the decision making of the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the adulterers, the lustful, the, sexual, the sexually deviant, the depraved, the witches. So the Holy Spirit Today or yesterday, as I was in prayer, I saw a beaded bracelet with a tassel on it. If you look at people in your church or in your neighborhood or in, at your work, you'll notice that they are adopting or taking on mo much of it is ignorance, though. They're taking on certain of the jewelry that is an expression of a religious belief. You see a dream catcher in someone's car hanging from their rear view mirror. You see the the tattoo of a a, a necklace with beads on it and beads on a rope and then a part of the rope is separate and it's got beads on it and, may, and it may have a, uh, a, a an image of a cross of a, cru a crucifix that's a rosary okay well we've got Buddhist culture and Buddhism is when you see a a person wearing a beaded bracelet there are beaded bracelets that are simply Design, especially if you go to tribal cultures, it may not, it may not directly signify a belief system. But in a in a nation as in as mixed as the United States of America, you've got several cultures on display, especially in the larger cities like New York and. Los Angeles and Miami and you know places like that so culture is visible demons reveal themselves through the culture you can see the truth in that people wear shirts and pants and belts and shoes the angels of the Lord wear clothing the Spirit of God himself wears clothing okay so clothing itself comes from the Lord but then we start to get to the styles of clothing the styles of jewelry the, the hair styles and when people are are accepting of the random aspects of culture the dying of the hair not even the dying of the hair I'm not saying that this guy whose beard is going gray and he wants to get some hair dye and he wants to make it all black that's different than that guy over there who wants to shave off the sides and just have it right down the middle that's a very distinctive style see many of the people who are subordinate to worldly culture can't distinguish what's worldly as in wicked from what's natural as in just orderly well that's just one of the things a person can do in order to trim or cut their hair there's a huge difference between when something spiritual is being communicated and when something natural is being communicated. So there, there are natural elements of culture and there are evil elements of culture making the culture evil because there are good and bad elements of it. Sons of God are in the culture, not of the culture. So, there are aspects of your culture that you're going to take on because they have watches 
in your society. Silicone or rubber bands with metals that enable you to have a watch. They have sh two tone shirts in your culture. And when you look at that, it doesn't specifically communicate pride, aggression, or witchcraft, or lust. It doesn't specifically communicate something. So my hair is naturally black. If parts of it become gray and I want to go and get some hair coloring and put it on my chin or on my hair, okay, well that, the Lord may, he may permit that. Oh, the word of God says this about gray hair. That's true. But if that guy wants to portray his hair black, I'm not saying there's no sin in it. I'm saying the Lord may let that. Okay, guy, go, you know, I see what you're doing. It may be a, an insecure move. It may be some, you know, some fear there. But fine. Go ahead. And he wants to do that. The Lord may not convict that guy about that. He may not talk to him about that. Because naturally his hair is black. Okay, so fine. He may leave that guy alone. But when you have a 25-year-old, especially someone who's active in a position of representing God or ministry, who takes on elements of the culture that are distinctively associated with rebellion, aggression, uh, excess. So the guy's hair is black. He shaves off the side and has the middle part. And he makes it blonde, though he's dark brown in skin complexion. And he does that because he sees that in his society. Or there's a particular wicked musician who has his hair all black and he cuts the sides and has the top get a little higher like a box or something and then has a part of it as gold. What, why is he doing that? What, why is he doing that? He's trying to communicate. He... First of all, what does that show you? It shows you that he likes what he sees others do and can and cannot distinguish that that's a move for pride sake. He can't distinguish that. He can't look at that and say, now that's done out of pride. That person is trying to draw attention to himself in a very particular way and because the person who starts doing that is not is is using that as a mark of his message to because he's a messenger so the guy who's doing that the girl who's doing that is a messenger they they're, they're communicating fear, lust, hatred, pride, independence, materialism, and greed. That's what they're communicating. And so they are dressing in distinctive, unique ways, unnatural and unique ways. They're dressing in and they're adorning themselves in unique ways. They're wearing jewelry directly associated with other religions they're wearing jewelry directly associated with other religions because demons run their lives and people who are controlled by demons run their lives and tell them how to dress how to wear the makeup how to cut the hair because culture is an expression of the spirits that govern it. In Proverbs 28, it says, for the transgression or the sinfulness of a land 
Many are the princes of it. That word prince refers to rulers. There are physical and spiritual governors of people. It says, but a person of understanding will preserve a region. So when the spirit of God gives you understanding of the spirit world and the physical world, and he shows you the laws of the spirit, when he tells you right from wrong, because the word of God is sharp and is living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the separation, to the dividing asunder, to the separation of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And it is a discerner. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. For all things are naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The one we are dealing with sees you and can look at you and say, you are doing that to be seen. You've got the spirit of ostentatiousness on you. You're being gaudy. You're being intentionally uh, uh, attractive in that you want to communicate sexual pleasure to people who should not have sexual access to you. Okay, so you're trying to make people think you're strong, make people think that you're a source of pleasure, you're trying to make people think that you're superior, and you're trying to position people to, to, make, to make it seem like you're in control. You're not in control if you are in rebellion against the Lord. So most have no idea, most have no idea what spirit is running their lives. They have no clue as to what spirit is running their lives because the word of God is not their basis for the decisions they make because they are not obeying what they do know and they are committed to people who are setting bad examples or no good example for them. The Lord refers to people as light and treacherous. He's saying in one sense, what they are saying and doing is not powerful enough to bring about your change. In another sense, he's saying they are convincing you to do bad things because they like to do bad things. So the Holy Spirit is saying that people are doing bad things and they're setting examples for others who want the freedom to do bad stuff. So people who understand the works of life because the Spirit of God is showing them how life works, they can back away from the culture and discern what it is. They can look at culture and say, okay, see that is what the word of God is referring to when it talks about this. That's what that is. It's because he that is spiritual judges all things. And the higher you go, the more you know. The higher you go, the more you know. It's not the opposite. You can know things and God not be talking to you. You can go on the internet and you can learn things and God not be talking to you about what you're acquiring. But when you obey the Spirit of God, he takes you higher and teaches you. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would teach you. He said he would lead the, the people of God. They're people who don't want to submit to God, but they do want the knowledge of God. Why do you want the knowledge of God without obeying his voice? It's because you're trying to hijack the minds of others. You're trying to show that you are worthy of controlling people's 
lives. And that will cost you eternal life if you don't repent from that mentality, if you don't turn. Do you know how many people who profess to know God will fight you if you reference Romans chapters 12, 1 and 2? People will fight you professed Christians when Paul by the Holy Ghost says I beseech you therefore brothers by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. People will fight you. They will say that there is no distinction between the ways of the Spirit of God and the ways of the world. They cannot distinguish. So understand that most of the people with whom you interact they don't know that their lives are under the control of a fallen spirit. They don't know because they enjoy what they're doing. They enjoy what they're doing. So they don't know and they do not obey what they do know. Height causing the word of God says my people go into bondage because they don't obey or something like that. It says it in uh, Isaiah chapter three. Very, very, very powerful and impactful word from the Lord in Isaiah chapter three. In Isaiah chapter three, uh, it says that, uh, I can't find it right now, but it said the people because they don't it says they're going to go into captivity because they don't understand so people don't have an appetite for the truth people don't have an appetite for the truth they don't love the Lord they don't love the Lord and because they don't love the Lord he allows them to remain confused in culture. And Paul by the Holy Ghost says, listen. Uh, Paul by the Holy Ghost says, listen. People are going to attempt to convince you that it's okay to do things that the Spirit of God warns you from doing. People will act, people, the word of God says the, uh, the fool or the wicked rages and is confident. So you live in a society, most of you, where the ungodly are confident. They're confident in how they wear their clothing. They're confident in how they speak. They're confident in how they wear their hair. They do bad things with confidence. Don't you understand that? You understand that the models of the clothing line, when you're in the mall, when you're in the mall, the mall is a house of culture. You go to the mall, you're going to a place where man is on display. Powers, demonic powers, govern the shopping malls. You know why? Because people govern the shopping malls. And the people have these stores primarily not to perform a necessary service. They primarily have these shopping stores to make money. Their number one goal is making money. Why do they want to make money? because they want control over their lives and over the lives of others. So the love of money, which is a key, a major component of the culture, the love of money is the root of all evil. 
if people can get away with it, they'll sell whatever. They'll sell people if they could do it without consequence. They will sell people. Okay? So the whole so when you go into a mall, the sons of God, the people, when you go into a mall, you are going into a war zone. You are going into a manifestation of the spirits that govern your area. If you don't know what demons run your area, go to the mall. If you want to, you say, I want to know what demons govern the area, go to the mall. Go to the mall. Go to the mall, you'll see. you say, oh, there's a place in my area. Okay, I've been wanting to talk about this, but I've got to talk about this with great humility and care. Ghetto. All right, so there are people of a few ethnic groups who watch Brother Dave's videos. So I don't want to isolate any particular group. But the word ghetto. What is the ghetto? It is descriptive of, descriptive of an area that is controlled by spirits of poverty, aggression, and ignorance. And lust. It's on display. So, poverty, aggression, lust, and ignorance, a lack of understanding. That's what's happening in the ghetto. It's on display. Every ghetto in America is a communication of those things, whether it's primarily populated by white people or black people. Now, a Native American place that's poor, you're not gonna call it a ghetto. It's gonna be called something else. Uh, but, so, if you go to a wealthy area, you say, well, what spirit governs this? Well, there's some order there. You're going to see prestigious order in this area. But you're not likely to see children running up and down the street. You're not likely to, to sense a welcoming friendliness in a wealthier area. You're going generally and you go to the, because we have super wealthy places in where, where I live, in West Palm Beach, in, in the Palm Beach County, I can go over into, so Brother Dave, in my vehicle, or on my skateboard, on my skateboard, I can go to the richest shopping district, the, arguably the richest shopping district in the United States. States of America. So I can leave my house right now with my skateboard in my van and drive over to an area. And that street right there, Worth Avenue, Palm Beach, USA, is the richest street. It's a short street. You could probably throw a football. It's probably like a 200 yard street. It's the richest street in the United States of America. I can park my van there and ride my skateboard to another place. And if I want to ride it for long enough, I'll go to a place that ha has one of the highest murder rates in the United States of America per capita, per amount of people. Yes, yes, that can happen. It would take me like 20 minutes on my skateboard to go from the richest street in all of the United States of America to the most violent area in type 
throughout the United States of America. So in the ghetto, I'm going to see ignorance, poverty, violence, and lust on display. I'm going to see it. The houses are going to say it. The attire, the attitudes, the driving behaviors. It's a culture. Those demons are governing that area. They control the area, positioning most to think or to be under the, to, under the influence of one or all of those spirits. Poverty, ignorance, aggression, and lust. Those are the demons that govern the ghetto. But the richer areas are governed by what? The spirit of pride, pride, and fear. If you sneeze too loud over in that area, the police are coming to get you. The police are coming to get you. Oh, because of the love of money. Pride, greed, fear. That's what you're going to find in the rich. The first thing you're going to feel when you're over there is, oh, they believe they're superior. Yes. Competition. Very high level competition. High level competition. They're competing with each other. Absolutely. That's what you see over there. And so we need to understand family in Christ Jesus that culture is not simply people's personal expressions or traditional expressions. Culture is a manifestation of the demons that govern the area. If you go to the area, the Holy Ghost can, can tell you this is the demon or these are the demons that run these people's lives and their behaviors are evidence of what spirits run this area when it's consistent and you can look around and say oh my goodness everybody or most of the people or a significant amount of the people here are doing this are under this influence I'll tell you one last story before we get out of here. So, and I've told you this several times, but, you know, brother, some of my testimonies are like Bible stories. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you open your Bible. Daniel and the lion's den is still in there. David and Goliath is still in there. So when you read the Bible over and over and over again, you're reading the same testimonies over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm going to tell you my testimonies over and over and over and over and over again. So, me, you know, these are the same stories, new life, fresh life. It's alive. Okay. So in about, I think 2006, in 2006, 2006, this shopping area opened up north of where I live. The shopping area opened up north of where I live. And we were close with a family. So they had a year old, they had a, uh, a child who was a year old and we had a child who was a year old. And so we wanted to, um, so someone in the family, my wife's, one of my wife's parents, I think, mentioned there's a new area, a new shopping area that opened up in this particular city, about, you know, 20 minutes north of where we live. You guys should go there. It's nice. So I said to my wife, I said, hey, let's, it's a Saturday night. Let's take the baby and go to this area. Let's go to this area to see this new shopping plaza. And like I said, this is 2006. I've been saved at that point for about nine years. So we go. We go. So we go, and it's nice, you know, nice, okay, orderly, nice structured, nice structures, art, sculptures, and things like that. So 
I'm looking around. Okay, this is nice. I guess we could come up here sometimes, you know? Got a movie theater up there. When I used to go to the movies. Okay, so movie theater up there. We could go there, I suppose. I'm looking around, looking around, looking around. Let's go down this hallway. It's outdoors, you know, like a outdoor mall area. So we go down to go down one of the hallways. And we see this bust. B U S T. We see this sculpture. It's a sculpture of a head. The head, you can't really see all of this, but the the thing, if you put the thing on the floor, it's about like maybe a six foot tall. Mm, six foot tall, about maybe five foot wide sculpture. Six foot tall, about five foot wide sculpture. And it's on a platform, so it's elevated. It's up there. So it's a tall structure. It's a big structure. It's stone or whatever. So I see it like, oh man. And I and you you look at the facial expression on the thing, and he's looking like this. So his eyes are down, and you know, very straight features. And he's kind of looking like he's kind of looking like this. It's a, his his head is like kind of turned this way, and his kind of, his eyes are down like this. You know, his eyes are almost closed, but not. He's just kind of looking down. In a very condescending way. Hair, wavy, wavy hair. You know, it's all carved in stone. And I'm looking at this structure, and it draws my attention. And so, Sister Melanie and I are standing there, and I'm looking at this thing. Okay. And I'm just staring at it. And as I stare at it, I notice, because it's all stone, so it's all one color, that it's curly hair that runs down to its shoulders that its curly hair inclu it includes horns so you really can't see it unless you just notice it you'd have to look at it to know that wait, wait, wait that those are not waves so you know the hair is curly and then it, these here it just kind of like goes off and curls and I look at this thing and I think I cannot believe you know you look around wondering if anybody else sees this or knows this is here what is this did what 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 is what what just happened like what is this a huge bust of a nordic looking person if you gave it color it'd be a white person with blonde hair you could just tell it'd be, if you gave it color white white person with blonde hair looking down I say what is this horns like lucifer and then attached to it was a, a mask. It was like a stone mask attached to the back of it, as though this creature could just change its face. I said, they have a sculpture of Lucifer at this brand new shopping plaza. I said, they have a sculpture of Lucifer at this brand new shopping plaza. This is a wealthy area. This is a wealthy area, lot, lots of money. You go down the street, you say, oh, these people have money. The city has money. The region is money. I said these. They have a sculpture of Lucifer. I looked at the artist name and works, and one of his works said something about Eden. Something or, or something or forbidden something. I said, okay, see? The spirit, I said, to my wife, I said, the demons are showing themselves. This is a central point of this area. It's not good enough for them to have a beautiful mall right down the street with high-end stores. The demons are not content with simply having nice mansions here 
beautiful street light, street signs, manicured grass area. No, the demons, because that, that, that might confuse you. And you might say, man, I sense the order and excellence of God here. I can tell there's order here. No, the demons were not content with that. They wanted to show themselves. It's earthly, sensual, and then devilish. When a person is being governed by the culture, that first culture just starts off in an earthly way. And then it starts off in a more sensual, I, I want to show my inner feelings manifestation. And then beneath that is the demonic components of the person and people. First, we all want to do it just because it's natural. Then we want to do it because, well, I feel like it. And now we're going to get into the, the, the demonic components of it. So you got this creature here. And I was shocked. I wanted to call the police. I wanted to call the police. I was looking around for security. Security. Like security. Look. These. I just wanted to find. I'm telling you. I was like. Ooh. Security. Like security. I wanted security. I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted like. No. You guys don't see this is security. No man. This is like evil so I saw that thing man. I said the spirit wants to show himself he demands I'm giving you all this money you better show me you better he put it on somebody's mind I know I'm gonna manifest in your plazas I want to manifest in your shopping plazas he demands worship that's what happened in the temptation of Jesus earthly sensual devilish that's what he tried to tempt Jesus with Jesus you're hungry eat earthly Jesus you want some fun you want to do something that's fun jump off the building why because it'd be fun jump off the building sensual no reason just sensual third thing devilish Jesus, I'm the devil. Bow down and worship me. I run the world. He went right for it. Earthly, eat this food. Sensual, have some fun. Excite your, stimulate your emotions. Jump off the building. Devilish, like, hey, listen, straight up, man, I'm the devil. Okay, I know you know that, but I'm the devil. Bow and worship me. I'll give you stuff. Right? Right for it. So... I brought some friends over there. I brought some friends. I said, I want to show somebody this. I want to see how they react to it. So the week after that, I took the brother, the guy who him and his wife had, had a son. I said, I want, I want you guys to come. Let's go to this, let's go to this new mall over there in that one city. He said, okay, so he, they got their ch child, and we had our child, and we went over there. I didn't say anything to them. I didn't tell anybody. We were there. The women broke off. They went their way. The men broke off and went their way. So the women broke off that way. I took the guy. I said, hey, man, let's go down this hallway right here. He said, okay. I was trying to distract the guy talk to him about vain, vain stuff I didn't want him to have any inclination of what I was going to show him we're walking we're talking I said yeah man blah 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 man nah man I'm telling you man blah 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 no blah 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 man blah 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 and he's looking at me like yeah he's laughing we were about Thirty-five yards from this object, and there are objects in between. We're about thirty-five yards from this object. There are objects in between. I'm talking to him. I want him to walk right up on it. I'm talking to him. Again, it's stone. You can't see the horns. You have to look at it. Like, oh man, those are horns. Those are not waves of the hair. We're about five. 35 yards from the area. 
He's talking. Ha 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 ha. He stops in mid laughter, shifts his face. He's looking at me. Ha ha ha. What is that? His eyebrows raise, his eyes bulge, and he stares. Where you can't see it. You can see it if you like do this. You can't see it. We're about 35 yards away. He's like, ha, ha, ha. What is that? He said, what is that? I said, that's what I brought you here to show you. We walk over to it, and he's in awe. He looks up at it. He, he can't, with his physical eyes, see the horns. You can't even, with your physical eyes, see the sculpture unless you ignore the fact that there are all kinds of weird things in between. Plants and stuff like that. What's my point? My point is that culture is driven by the demons that govern the area. And when you say yes to culture, you say yes to the demons that govern the area. If you are unwilling to distinguish between the holy and the profane, not by your sensual feelings, the spirit and the word of God, if you are not willing to test all things, and to hold to that which is good if you are not willing to prove everything if you are not willing to examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith lest you be reprobates if you are not willing to identify what you are doing and how your actions line up with the word of God you are going to be governed by the demons in the area and the word of God says that Satan deceives the whole world so you are not going into darkness with a full awareness of what you're doing you are disobedience at fundamental stages blinds you to who's behind the culture to the degree that you are blinded to the more major aspects of your world to that degree you are going to spend eternity apart from the spirit of God it doesn't matter that you don't want to go to hell you are going it doesn't matter if you don't want to go. You, yeah, if you don't want to obey, if you are not seeking to know the Spirit of God, He's going to send you strong delusion so that you believe a lie and can give reason for why you should do what you're doing. Yes, you're going to be able to argue why wickedness is righteousness with the best of them. Yes, you're going to be able to make sense of all kinds of wickedness. All kinds of wickedness. Because of deception. Because you didn't receive the love of the truth. So, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is within reach. It's at hand. And Jesus is manifesting.